uh, Bing is the, the rally of the valley. He's the one that God spoke to him. He had 90 guys. He, has, he runs a men's ministry. He runs 120 guys at an independent breakfast at a restaurant. Cost you ten bucks to come to his route or his breakfast. You can come to my breakfast for free. I'll give you a meal for so just coming. He gets ten bucks out of everybody. He runs 120. A good breakfast room is 160, 165 guys. And so I, I want Bing. Come on, up, Bing. I want Bing to speak first because I think he understands and he's got a handle on men's ministry. He had 90 guys that wanted to go to Promise Keepers. And he called Promise Keepers and said, we don't have any tickets left, sorry. And he goes, well, what am I supposed to do with these guys that I collected, these 90 guys? They go, well, we don't know what you're going to do with them, but I can't come here and we're booked. And so out of that, they met in the garage, what, four guys? What, roughly? About 10. ten or 10 guys. Fill me in on the story. About <laughs> uh, 10 guys. And uh, they said, well, let's do our own rally. And so 10 years ago, they went to Cavelli Center and they said, wait a minute. You got ten guys. You wanna you wanna rent this massive arena with ten guys? And they said, "Well, you can go ahead and do this, but you can't get your deposit back." You know that, don't you? They thought that they were nuts, and they thought that it would never happen, you know, and all those things. And and uh, ten years later, the last three years, they paid for all the bills except for the miscellaneous uh, by donations, which is what about ninety thousand now. Hundred four thousand. It went down when they stopped buying the lunches. Now they're getting back up again. So, hundred four thousand dollars one day. But to see people that accept Christ there, to see people baptized, to see lives changed, to see um, uh, not youth for what's all our youth, not youth, but uh, what is it? Uh, the drug, drug and alcohol, what are those? Teen Challenge. Teen Challenge. Teen Challenge, you have what, like six, seven different, six different ministries like Teen Challenge that come there. Those guys are hungry. They get fed. They see men's lives change. Uh, it, it's, it's really exciting. So anyways, that's kind of what, he's going to talk a little bit about the rally, but big is my mentor. Does anybody, has anybody followed any man out here, or is everybody just doing their own thing? Uh, Bing is my, he's my coach, he's my, uh, when I grow up, I want to be like Bing. <laughs> if that makes sense. I mean, he, he was eight, he was 74 years old, and he started a men's ministry on a big scale. Everybody that I know in church is 74 years old, they want to sit in the corner and say, I'll let somebody else do it. And they won't even be the janitor, you know, to help clean up. They're too old. That's not what God called us to. Your, your spirit never gets old. Your spirit never slumbers. Your spirit never gets weak. Your spirit is the same as when you were 16 years old. It's your body that you got to tell it what to do and what you're going to do. And, and Bing does yeah. that. So, so anyway, so he, he started this rally, and, and I went the second year, and I got involved. And I get a little more involved every year because it's, it's real. It's real. And we need men's ministry. And uh, maybe I can just throw this in. The lights and the, the sound and the drums and all this stuff. I'm 63 years old. I don't, I don't need to have to worship God, but the millenniums do. The next church, they want lights. When I was 16, 15 years old, you know, they were trying to bring drums into church. And oh, my gosh, drums. Really? Well, now it's lights. Millennials want lights. You know, it, it's what is it going to take to win somebody to Christ? It's not about our tradition. It's not about what we're used to. It's not even what we like to do. It's about what it's going to take to minister and win the next generation to Christ. Yeah, and right. Bing's got that, that vision, and he's keeping that vision. I guess we're waiting to catch a street or something. But. Anyway, so Bing is my friend, and so I uh, hope I did a good job introducing him. He is real. What you see up front is what you see at the rally. In the background, what you see is, uh, well, the other cool thing when I was, you don't know it, but the first rally I went to, he was big arena, and he sat like uh, 10 seats down for me and 10 over. So here's this older guy. Sorry. <laughs> and he's sitting there, and there's people coming up to him, and he's answering their questions. And he's enjoying.
showing the speakers, and I thought, man, this guy running this thing is not a control freak. That's what really drew me to you. I thought, almost every church I've been into or any ministry I've been in charge of, I've seen a bunch of control freaks. They're in charge. You know, here I am, you know, do the, behind, go do that for me. I've seen people coming up to him and saying, okay, uh, in my position, what do I, I guess that's what they're doing. What, what, and he answered their question, and he just go on. I thought, this, this is real. This is a real men's ministry. This is how the body of Christ should be working. That, that you're in charge, but you're not a, you're, you're not in a control freak. You're in control, but you're letting the people that are called in that area do what they're called to do. And, and so anyways, that's, you didn't know that, but I was watching it. There's always somebody watching me. You know that? My wife's always, always watching me. Well, okay, we'll let that go. Do I need this? Yeah, no, no. no. Or take it. You need that. I, I hope you understand. Uh, you need that. I was a track coach. We're taking So, you got to use your voice. So, if you think I need this, we need that. we'll use it. <laughs> I'm not big behind this, baby. What I thought about sharing with you guys, and I, I want you to know something. You, you don't sit in meeting up here very often. Um, I want people to know that, that I'm a nobody. <laughs> no different than anybody else in this room. But you know, that's what God uses. God uses nobodies that will make them into somebodies. Amen. And so... <clears throat> I want to share with you about, and I don't, I don't do this very often. It would be for Ray. I wouldn't be doing it today. But I just want to talk about uh, He Touched Me. And uh, as a track coach, uh, I asked Keith if he would share. There are three scriptures, so he's got to use some things to uh, pull me in. And so, uh, would you read? You're going to start with Joshua 1 9. Bear with me here a little bit. I have only one eye. Here's your good one. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I feel like a little bit, I didn't know I was going to do this. One time I, I was just saved. I was in a church about 350. And I was running for a, uh, and I was looking for donations. And I uh, asked the pastor if I could uh, come across the people. He said, sure, he said, you can do that. And I said, okay. So I'm standing up there, and I'm getting ready to just pitch my back. I want to. He goes around to the sponsor me. There's another speaker ahead of me, and he was reading scripture. And he got up there to read, and I'm just sitting back there, and I was trying to go over what I was going to say. And he started coughing, and pretty soon he, he come back, he says, he says, I can't do this. He says, you'll have to sit, and you'll have to read this. My knees were so weak, I couldn't hardly get up. And I, because what I was reading, I, I butchered everything. And so I finally made it up with grace of God. He lifted me up and got me up there. Amen. And I did, and, and I, I read it okay, I guess. This is a little bit like this. I didn't know I was going to do this. So my knees aren't weak, but just bear with me. I want to go up the mic, remember that. Joshua, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Hang on to that. That's a promise. And that's what God gives us. He gives us promises. Proverbs 3, 5, 6, next? Yeah, I'm looking. I found it. And I got a little story with this, and I didn't know, I didn't know what I was reading here. But 
just, uh, I was just saved, I, I'm not very long, I was in, in another church, a church I'm going to. And they had a guy there who was prophesying. And the guy looked at me and I'm back there and said, Boy, I think you give me this scripture. This is a good one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead on, and lead not on to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. And then at that point, you know, I needed that. Uh, and now he'll be reading 1 Corinthians 9, 23 through 27. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I do. I said that when I got married. <laughs> How'd that work out? <laughs> I, do, I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in, your, in its blessings. Do not you know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but will do it. Will do it to get a crown that will last forever. <clears throat> Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it a slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Another problem. With that, uh, I'm going to take my life before Christ. Um, I was uh, an individual, thanks, Keith. Uh, I never put my hand up in school until I was a sophomore in college. Uh, I thought everybody was better than me. I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to be successful. I was a coach. Did a terrible job. Terrible job. Because when you have that kind of attitude, then you begin to use people. And I got the feeling that, you know, I could paddle my own canoe. Uh, from, from about 18 years old to about 28, um, we were married, uh, had two children, but when Sunday came, uh, Big Newton just rolled over. My wife went to church, took the kids, but I think, you know, when I come right down to it, uh, I'm just an arrogant, selfish individual. And and my wife never said a word to me. She merely went to church. But little did I know that uh, God was on my trail. I didn't realize that uh, her Sunday school class was praying for me. And that should let you know that you're a marked man. And so, this went on for quite a while, until one day, I was sleeping away, a knock came at the door, and I looked down, and there were three men. Now, I was smart enough to know they should have been in church. So I heard he got dressed, I went down and invited him in, and... I had them sit down, I looked at them and I said, what are you guys doing? And then they said, we're looking for 
for a Sunday school teacher. And I thought to myself, you gotta be crazy. <laughs> You're on my doorstep wanting me to be a Sunday school teacher. But you also gotta understand something else, man. We can be a big phony. And that's really what I was. Uh, because I was a teacher, so you could fall in and let people think you're on the money when you're not. But when God's on your trail, look out. So I accepted their invitation, became their teacher, until we were getting a new pastor in town. And our class was sponsoring the picnic. And the president asked me, Bing, would you read scripture? No problem. No problem. I got finished reading scripture, and he looks at me and he says, Bing will now lead us in prayer. I'm going to tell you something. It's a good thing my heart at that point was in pretty good shape. Or I'd have died right off the spot. Because I don't know him. How can I, how can I talk to him? But it was almost like him backing you in the corner and telling me, now you got to talk to me. But I even had to ask him for words. So anyway, then the pastor came up to me later on and said, Bing, uh, would you go to lay speaker school? I said yes. And then one day, we, uh, the church sponsored a trip to the Billy Graham and Crusade. And we signed up. We're there, and he gave the invitation, and I'm telling you, I wanted to get up there so badly, but I couldn't even get out of my seat. All the way home, I, I, I said, Lord, come. I wanted to give my life. To you, I couldn't. Hmm. Well, then, um, see, everything I everything I touch was lost. Everything. Our team was loaded. We went to the county track meet. This was 1970. We come back forth. So we're walking down to. Riley Stadium, and Ishiani Kid, he was 16 years old, he was one of my shot putters, and he looked at me and he says, Coach, we need something. For some reason I said, well, what do you think we need? Uh, I'm, I can't believe that a 16-year-old would have said this to his coach, but he said, we need God. And I said, I think you're right. So, we sent five young men. Now, here's a guy who doesn't even know Christ. <coughs> we raised the funds to send them to the FCA conference. They come back. They came in my office, and I said, tell me about it. Holy cow. I didn't have to be an Einstein to know. These kids are not the same ones that we sent. I also knew something else. I needed the pay. Awesome. So we start the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Well, here I am. I'm not a Christian. But one day, telephone rang, and this pastor uh, in Salem says, Bing. Would you like to come? We got a concert going on. Would you bring some of your athletes up for that concert? This was like the lamb being led to slaughter. Got to that concert. The invitation was given, and I want you to know. I couldn't get up to that altar fast enough. And then I knew. 
right next to me was my assistant. And I can see him like it was yesterday. Right down that altar was 35 athletes. You see how important it is that we make a decision for Jesus Christ? Like Bray said, people are watching. And when their coach made a decision, they too made a decision. Wow. So, that was February the 10th, 1971. The next 47 years. All I can say is wow. It's wow. Has it been easy? I wouldn't say so. Has there been any storms? Oh, man. There's been a lot of storms. You see, as Christian people, we need to understand one thing. If we think that we're going to be a person that's going to go life through life and no storms, we're in dreamland. God has one promise. It doesn't matter what we're going through. He's going to be with us. So as a result, that's what this life of mine has been involved with. I really thought it was coaching track. It was involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. But now I know that. And that wasn't it at all. He was preparing for a guy to become the director of the men's rally in the valley. He needed a coach. He needed a coach to develop a team to do his work. Come on. Why he ever picked this guy, I have no idea. But he did. And you see, he's trying to tell us, it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter at all. In fact, when we coached track, we coached that last 150 meters, and especially the last 20 meters. Now, as you see, that's where the races are won and lost. Anybody could start out strong. But we didn't, we, we didn't care whether you were first or last or where you were, but you came down that stretch with everything that you had. Hmm. That's the key. I'd like to share with you and I want to tell you, there's a reason for me being here this morning. I know there is. And some of you are going to say, you've got to be crazy to come here and expect us to do this. Because I'm going to tell you how many uh, individuals I see coming to the Men's Rally in the Valley this year from Canton, Ohio. Do you want to know how many? That's my you need theory. to start praying. 1,000. Come on. 1,000. You see, don't come. I'm going to tell you who the speakers are. Don't come for a speaker. Don't come for the music. Come for Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The theme of this rally is going to be Jesus is our only hope. It isn't our government. It isn't how much money we can pour in. God is trying to speak to His people. You've tried it on your own and it's failed miserably. Now it's time to let me do it. And so we need to come and flood this back with people just there for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. 
we need to send a message to them. We are so... Our, our churches are in chaos. Our team is, is, is not unified. It's terrible. If I was someone on the outside and I'm looking inside, I would say, I don't think I want to belong to that team. <laughs> and if that's how you work together for Jesus Christ, I don't want to do it. We must send a different message. Do you realize that 50% of our people out there aren't even going to church? Right. I had a man about two months ago, he was speaking to our group, but he's looking right square at me. And he says, there's one church in this valley that I have not been to. And he said, that's Greenford Christian. And that's where I go. And he's looking right at me. And he says, I'm going to tell you why. Because nobody has asked me. Hmm. And I looked at him, I pointed at him, and I said, Consider it done. Sunday he was there. You see, I got the message. 50% of our men aren't even going to church. And you know why? Nobody has asked them. We must. Christ needs men. that are unashamed, that have a, a holy boldness yes. about them. Come on. Pray. Now I want you to know something else is going on again. Malone College, is, we're, we're going to have a mini rally at Malone College on March 28th. So they're going to be a part of that thousand. And if you people get 20 individuals each, look what we're looking at. There was a little sign we used to have over top of my doors, Coach. With God, what? All things are possible. All things are possible. But you see, if we lean on, on our own understanding, we'll say, a thousand men? That's crazy. We could never do that. And the answer is, you're right. You're right. But I know a God who can. Amen. Come on. And that's who we have to rely on. Pray hard. It takes a bus, two buses, whatever it takes. Get it done. You see, I just had an athlete that I, I just, I coached him. He was at the rally, he was on fire. 44 years old. About a week and a half ago, he committed suicide. Why? No. no. We got people we're even sitting alongside in church. But you see, this young man came to the church. And if you said, Dan, how are you doing? He'd have a big smile on his face. And what do you think he'd say to you? I'm doing fine. And as you look at him from the outside, Dan would be doing fine. But inside, not doing fine. We need to be touching those men. So let me talk, tell you about who God has lined up. Dave Reber. You know about Dave Reber? Oh, yeah. Powerful. Vietnam vet. He'll be there. 
Any of you read the shack? The author, Paul Young, will be there. Now I'm going to ask you another one. How many of you have seen the, uh, the film man on TV? Mike Lindell. Mike Lindell. Uh, the first time he shared his testimony, there he was. He, was. he had thousands of people, and he was on his knees on my pillow. I looked around the arena. There were thousands of people all on their knees on my pillow. And I, you know, my wife's in bed so I could talk. So I said, Lord, don't you think it would be great if every man who comes to the Cavelli Center would be on their knees with my pillow? So I shared this with the, uh, with the secretary, Shannon's her name, and you know what she said? I can make that happen, baby. She says, you tell me how many pillows, and we'll provide it. Hmm. We got them. Um, how about Jeff Stoltz? Anybody, uh, anyone uh, know Jeff Stoltz? Broken chains, celebrate recovery. You, you, you know about that program? In churches all over. And, and he'll be coming. Uh, how about Lee Haney? Anybody? Uh, Lee Haney was uh, Mr. America, I think, eight times. And uh, he'll be there. So that's, um, that's the people that we have. Now, I'm gonna be, I want you to know something. Our challenge is a thousand. A thousand men. Now, what do we have to do? Start praying. And so, that's where we'll be. I'll be praying behind you, and uh, you'll do the same. Now, as we close out, I told you I was a nobody. As a coach, before Christ, everything, everything I, I touched, I lost. But as soon as the Lord came into the coaching and took over, we couldn't lose. And the reason? He gave us a peace and, and an assurance of what sports is all about. And so as a result, um, you will never see Ben Newton's name. Uh, I went to Antonio High School. Don't ever expect to see his name there. Because I was not that great an athlete. But you see, there is one Hall of Fame that all of us can become members of. And so I'd like to close. I'd like to close.
the God he never does forget, and in his Hall of Fame, by just belonging, uh, pardon me, just believing in his Son, in strive you'll find your name. I tell you, friend, I wouldn't trade my name down here. And that's there be on the stars in the celestial ball for all the famous names on earth or glory that they share. I'd rather be an unknown here and have my name described up there. You see, that's what God is saying to us in our uh, our drive, in our race. Give it all for me and you beautiful part. You know, he's not going to uh, ask you, you know, what church do you go to? It's not going to be part of the equation. You want to know, do you know my son? Do you know, you know? He simply will say, welcome home. So with that, I want to thank you for the privilege of coming and sharing uh, with you.